And welcome to the Storybookers Untranslated, a show where I will be looking at Japanese books that never got translated into English. I want to start out on an overwhelmingly positive note with Stepfather Step by Miyuki Miyabe. This was one of my favorite books growing up, and I never understood why it wasn't translated. It's seven short story mysteries that are all tied together by this overarching emotional plot. And it's a it's hilarious, and it's about family, and it's just everything I love in a story. So the first chapter is super, super short. So I thought I would do an on the fly translation. So I quickly went ahead and I translated it. So Stepfather Step by Miyuki Miyabe. Apparently I hit my head. When I opened my eyes, I was seeing double. The light on the ceiling, the large flower patterns on the curtain beside me, the little face looking down at me. Hey, his eyes are open, that face said. I could only hear one voice, but I could see two faces. Two completely identical faces. Both were blurry. I tried to move, but had no sensation in my limbs. At best, I could only blink. So I did that a few times. The lights on the ceiling multiplied to three, and then became one. And then two faces leaned over me again, and everything went dark. Oh, he's going to sleep again. The voice sounded distant through the darkness. That's right. Good night. He's thinking that, not saying it. The next time I opened my eyes, there was only one light on the ceiling. The curtains were open, and bright sunlight was shining in through the cloudy glass. Judging by the angle, I guessed that it was still morning. Where am I? I wondered. And at last, my memory and reason reappeared, hand in hand. This was an unwelcome pair in my current state. The only way to turn them away would be to pass out again. I wanted to go back to oblivion forever. But my reason and memory were here to stay. I was fully awake. My senses were working perfectly. Disgustingly so. To top it off, my entire body was in pain. It felt like every part of my body was being assaulted by countless tiny little hammers. And not from the outside, but from the inside. The worst of it was my head and my shoulders. My right shoulder in particular was in all-out war with my right arm, which had launched a rebellion to declare independence from my body. In reality, it was probably dislocated. Merely moving my eyelids made my head throb. This was bad. Maybe irreversibly so. I might be doomed to a bedridden life, unable to stand ever again. My memory said, well, no surprise there given how far you fell. My reason said, still, how lucky are you to be alive? I was stupid enough to try and shake my head to clear it, and ended up groaning. This wasn't some soft, oh, ouch. It would be more accurate to describe it as a wail. I heard a door open somewhere. Light footsteps followed, and stopped right beside me. I had my eyes closed against the pain, so all these sounds and the voice that followed came to me in the darkness. Good, you're conscious. Ever so carefully opening one eye at a time, I found myself once again seeing two faces. I was seeing double. The two faces were completely identical. So my senses aren't quite back to normal yet, I thought. Or perhaps I was destined to see double for the rest of my life. Then again, we have two eyeballs, so maybe this is more natural. How are you feeling? asked the two faces. That was when I realized something was off. It looked as if the left face had said how are, and the right face had said you feeling. As I stared up at them, the two faces began to look amused. Is there something on our faces? Once again, the right and left faces appear to be speaking independently. What a convoluted neurological disorder. I tried closing one eye. The two faces looked at each other. Are you winking at us? When I tried the other eye, the two faces grinned. The left face had a dimple on his right cheek, and the right face had a dimple on his left cheek. I opened both eyes and tried raising my head ever so slightly. Each face was attached to its own body. Though they were wearing the same shirt and sweater, the design over the chest differed. 
Each sweater had a letter of the alphabet, but one said T and the other said S. The two faces spoke in unison. We're twins. And that was chapter one, chapter one of story one. It is a hilarious book. It was one of my favorites when I was a kid. When people want to read Miyuki Miyabe, I wish I could recommend this book. Um, the things that have been translated are um, All She Was Worth, which is a great thriller, Brave Story, which is sort of urban fantasy, like slipstream, I guess you call it, where like he goes from our world into a more like medieval fantasy land. The Book of Heroes, I think, has been translated. Crossfire has been translated. I'm looking at Crossfire right in front of me. The Japanese version, not the English version, but I know it's been translated. There is a drama of this. I bet you could find that with English subtitles, but I've never seen it. I can't vouch just to the quality. But yeah, if I could recommend any Miyuki Miyabe book to people, it would be this one. And I've never understood why it didn't get translated. Maybe the humor wouldn't carry through. Maybe they just thought there wasn't a market for it. I don't know. But it's a shame. And if you are learning Japanese, if you can read Japanese, I highly recommend this book. And that was the first episode of the Storybookers Untranslated. Next time we might not be so positive. <laughs> we'll see. Thanks for watching. Bye! So, the first chapter is super, super short, so I thought I would do an on-the-fly translation. Now, I did try recording a version where I just translated the chapter on the fly, um, just holding it in my hand and translating as I went. I'll you, uh, but when I got to editing it, uh, even when I tried to go and edit out the pauses to make it flow more naturally, I just realized it's not very fun to listen to or to watch. So I quickly went ahead and I translated it and I'm going to just read that. <laughs>